Hi, and welcome to the Risk and Resilience Insight interviews. I'm Grant Kennedy, Managing Director at Key Risk, and today we have Patricia. Patricia is going to give a, a little introduction. First of all, um, leads risk at UNICEF and is also the chair of the IRM in North America and Caribbean region. So uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. And the topic that we're going to discuss today is value creation, adding and protecting value, a really important part of enterprise risk management. So if we could maybe just have a quick uh, background to yourself, Patricia, and uh, introduction, that, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grant, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Patricia Kidwingira, and uh, I'm happy to share with you my background. My journey is a global one. I am from Burundi, a country in Africa, and I've ha had the privilege of studying and living, living and working across Africa, Europe and America. My academic journey began at University Libre de Bruxelles in Belgium, where I graduated with honours in economics. I pursued an MBA in business administration in the United States and obtained a number of certifications from the Institute of Internal Audit, the Ethic and Compliance Initiative, and recently the Institute of Risk Management. My life uh, has taken a significant turn in 1993, 1994, when there was a civil war in Burundi and the Rwandan genocide occurred. These events led me back home and play a crucial role in shaping my character and resilience. Upon turning, returning home, I went in the private sector. I started my career in auditing. I served as a consultant at the at a brewery company, Brahudi. Um, at the same time, I had the opportunity to share my knowledge as a part-time lecturer at the University of Bujumbura in Burundi and in Butare in Rwanda. I also start taking some consultancy roles at the United Nations. Years later, I embarked in an international career, starting in Uganda as an internal control officer before moving to New York as an internal auditor in a large organization at UNICEF. As internal audit manager, I had had an incredible opportunity to work and visit nearly 100 countries across five continents. And I have volunteered in various organizations, taking up leading leadership roles. So as you see, Grant, my life has been a resilient journey marked yeah. by seizing opportunity that yeah, result in the valuation. That's what I could tell as you as you were talking. <laughs> Think of that resilience yes. journey that that different people go through. And that's what we want to build on today. And the first question we're going to ask is around what makes you what risk, what's the riskiest thing you, you've ever taken and what makes you resilient? Maybe if you sort of give that two dimensions and uh, see if it links back into your, your history and what if that plays a part, that would be interesting to hear. Thank you. Thank you again. I I thought of the riskier things that I really um, would like to share with the, the community at the Institute of Risk Management. And really, it's something that I believe can connect all of us. Uh, I really want to recount the pivotal experience of navigating COVID-19 crisis in New York. So I was in March 2020, I was working in Africa. Um, when uh, the pandemic started, we didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, with the border closing and flight to my hometown, Bujumbura, being cancelled, I decided to come back to New York, my current residence, which was rapidly emerging as a COVID hot, 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 hot spot. As you will see, statistical data reveals that the pandemic precipitated a profound economic downturn in New York, uh, which has been quantified uh, at around 40, 445 billion loss. The economic shock shockwave triggered substantial unemployment and imposed severe financial strain on a vast number of residents. Despite facing numerous challenges during the pandemic, I quickly adapted to the new normal and transitioned to remote work. Simultaneously, I assumed a leadership role at Toastmaster International, a non-profit organization based in Colorado that promotes public speaking and leadership skills globally. So in May 2020, I volunteered for a leadership role 
as a Toastmaster International with my organization approval, with UNICEF approval. I was selected, I was elected at, as District 46 director, serving the north of Manhattan, the Bronx and Westchester. At that time, uh, District 46 has around 116 clubs with 2,900 members. Despite the pandemic causing closure and job losses, I found maintaining this public speaking and leadership program through clubs in District uh, 46, extremely challenging, but also very rewarding. So I'm going to really share with you how during the lockdown, we were able to create value. Okay. So Toastmaster, yes, sorry. Okay, we'll, we'll build into that. And I think um, before we get to that, let's, let's understand a little bit more about your experience with the IRM and how that adds value to you personally by being the chair of the uh, of the IRM in, in North America and the Caribbean. One of the um, leadership experience that I really still enjoy uh, today because I was elected uh, the chair of ERM, the North American Caribbean group last year in June um, with my organization with UNICEF endorsement. I really volunteer to start uh, establishing the North American Caribbean Regional Group for the Institute of Risk Management. This role has allowed me to contribute to the risk management um, in a region that has approximately 4,000 members. The process of uh, establishing a regional group uh, entails uh, strategic planning, coordination, collaboration with various stakeholders, and is also offered an opportunity for learning and growth. Our regional group has uh, 10, 10 um, committee members, three executive committee members and seven committee members who are all volunteers and founding members. We are a diverse group from Canada, Caribbean, Mexico and the US. And uh, uh, since inception, we have organized three global events, online events and contribute to 2024 risk trend that really if you read it, the ERM risk trend will tell you what we plan for 2024. And uh, really, our in, uh, mission is centered on providing lead, uh, learning opportunity to professionals and then create that network where we can talk and discuss on the profession. So really, um, Grant, what I want to say here that one of the key things that I believe I get from mm -hmm. that uh, uh, leadership role uh, is encapsulating what Dr. Rainer Sands uh, mentioned about trust triangle. So he talk about logic, empathy, and authenticity. So when you look at that, those three elements, the competencies that risk manager and auditor need to have. So the logic is really what we do when we analyze, when we start to use reasoning, critical thinking, and then conclude give a judgment or recommendation or uh, advice on how to mitigate risks. But mm -hmm. we also need something that I really start to learn when I take this leadership position is empathy. How mm -hmm. do you communicate? How do you make sure that you understand and you get to the root cause? You really have to have a heart to heart conversation with uh, people who are managing a process, who are dealing with uh, um, some risks and then make sure that we understand and then make the necessary change. So this is really where, especially now where we talk about artificial intelligence, that's why human will be different from a robot. And the third element of that triangle, which is uh, authenticity at the top, logic and empathy in the middle is the authenticity. So yeah. by me talking to you authentically, you will see that we start to create value. Exactly, you. and you can tell you get a lot of value from being as part of that group. And you know, I've been involved in the, the Scottish group, being the vice chair and involved in various different groups for the IRM. And, and that network, that camaraderie, that authenticity you're talking about really just builds up uh, and you can get support from lots of different people members. So that that's excellent to hear. And hopefully, well not hopefully, that, that allows us to build to the core uh, of this uh, insight interview and it's about value creation which is really what good risk management is about it's about adding and protecting value 
but often that's not considered the, the core. So I think it would be really interesting to understand how you see that. So the, the next question is from your perspective, what role does risk management, risk professionals play in value creation in organisations? Um, when we talk about value creation uh, grants, one of the things that I really want us to keep in mind is that the world in the world there is a constant, the only constant is change. Keeping up with those uh, change can be a challenge. As a member of uh, ERM and uh, many other uh, professional organizations, I discovered that continuous professional development is really invaluable in staying current and adaptable. So in uh, post-COVID era, there is a need for adjustment. And I think that's where uh, every uh, IRM member should really start to question how we can really build our knowledge to create value. I, we need to adjust, we need to understand as my friend and mentor Paddy Kennedy has instilled in me uh, the five hours of leadership. They have guided me uh, throughout. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the post-pandemic era, but it's something that maybe I had before, but it's something that I I look at more carefully now. Um, it's the five R talks about re resolve, resilience, return, reimagination, and reform. So when you look at uh, how uh, you can create value, it's you need to reimagine because many things, some things are the same, but things are changing. So when you think about uh, COVID, COVID has been really transformational uh, because we we are now talking on podcasts. You are in UK, I am in New York. So this is the kind of things that really help us now to start to see how to help uh, other members. So when you uh, think of what uh, the value creation with the with the Institute of Risk Management. Uh, we talk about uh, education. We talk about uh, networking. We talk about uh, different things. And when you look at what happened uh, with the lockdown, I'm going to summarize the key uh, element that I really can capture. That I first of all during COVID. I joined the Institute of Risk Management because the tool I had were no longer sufficient. So when we transitioned from uh, to the virtual world, we actually learn, and I can tell you that with Toastmaster International uh, uh, directing the communication, learning to co connect uh, through the virtual uh, environment, we we uh, that way eliminated the distance. We can communicate without being together. We learn to be cost effective. We ex expand our reach. So you can be in uh, New York and want to learn something and j jump on Zoom and uh, sit with a group uh, talking about something that is of interest in the UK. So we have really started to see how to create value to innovate. So the technology, the podcast, uh, I, I uh, helped to create the first po podcast club in the, in New York in uh, 2020. Um, we also have like an online choir. So when we want to sing, we were not doing karaoke at home on Zoom, but we had a group that can come and sing together. So those events really try to create some normalcy, normalcy in a very difficult time. So when you think about value creation, uh, it's something that uh, the one of the leader uh, and uh, academic professor, John Quetch, really uh, gave a, a kind of uh, roadmap that use the seven C's. And the seven C's is something that I really try to use at that time, uh, which is calm, confidence, communication, collaboration, community, compassion, and cash. As you remember during COVID, many people didn't have enough cash. So cash was something that we need to really think that maybe people have some challenges. And it was those kind of guidance 
and I think when you start to think about value creation, it's those tools that can really help us um, to start to build and rebuild, reimagine and build resilience so we can um, build a better future. So I, in summary, I really want to say that the value creation and uh, what I learn and what I'm using uh, in uh, the Institute of Risk Management, the tools uh, leading the regional group, uh, it's really now connecting the five R's, the trust triangle and the seven C's. That really is the framework for leadership. And when you have different elements, the framework that guide you to start to think that everything we do help you create a value. I think uh, this is really something that I I, I, I see in those three framework uh, that uh, there is a, an element of resilience in the five R's that mm -hmm. can be linked to the two C's in the seven C's. Resilience can be linked to calm and confidence. And uh, it's a uh, and then empathy in the triangle trust can be linked to the compassion in the seven C's. So when you think about the many frameworks that we are talking about, I think those are the ones that help building uh, and creating value in the organization. Thank you. It's, and those are the ones that have uh, allowed you to, to, to build your own framework within your own network that you're building. And you, you like the abbreviations and, and, and that, that's good to hear some of the ones that you're focusing on. How then does that value creation within this network that you've become involved in, that you've helped to evolve, how are you seeing some value creation from what you've learned and experienced and, and done yourself back into your organisation? Are you seeing some of those tools and techniques and some of the value creation you've learned from, from that network, helping your organisation, helping yourself in your role in that organisation? Um, I do many of those leadership uh, role outside of my organisation. But definitely, uh, as a, an internal audit, you need trust. You need your company to trust you. You need to give recommendations that are really adapted. So when when I talk about um, need adjusting to in my career to COVID, there's that that uh, mechanic aside that I can have. As an auditor, I travel, so I'm used to work in a different location. So I can I can work from home and do ask questions, uh, review document, and then uh, produce a report. But many controls, many, as you know, uh, many uh, criteria that we use to test has changed. When you think about supply chain, when you think about uh, monitoring, when you think about many of the controls that we felt that were as sound, when they, they are not working anymore, coming to uh, ERM, working on communication, um, all those things uh, helped uh, my work. So when I do advisory, they need to trust me. I need to work on innovative way to find if we don't have criteria, work with the team to understand if uh, it's a, there is a clarity. So definitely working in the Toastmaster International, communicating better, um, having this understanding the leader. So when a leader talks to me, I understand where they are, where they are coming from, and there is no those those barriers are gone, and I can we can really work together to understand the root cause. And when you think of me joining during COVID the Institute of Risk Management, it's because I didn't really I felt that some of the control, some of the recommendation I may give may change immediately. So we are talking about significant change in the world. We are talking about cybersecurity, we are talking about artificial intelligence. So if you don't really go outside of your organization to learn how other people are doing it, you, you become obsolete. So definitely all those things that I am bringing back from the Institute of Risk Management from uh, different um, activity that I do, uh, I bring them back in yeah. the organization, yes. Exactly. And, and that's what I've picked up over the years as well, being involved in the different groups, but also, I suppose, my privileged position of being able to go and work with so many different leading companies from all over the world. Every time I go there, whether it's the UN or NATO or World Bank or whatever it is, it is 
you're always learning something is you know, I'm the trainer, I'm the advisor, but there's always something you pick up from somebody else. And that's why we love doing these insight interviews and also why in the future we're going to be doing much more of shared learning, going to organisation, the risk and resilience insight tours. It's so important to collaborate and go look and see as well in different ways. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's brilliant some of the things that you're saying. Yes. I think the I, I, I just want yeah. I, I just want to to mention something that when I was I was a, um, a member and I was working on my certification from, from the Institute of Risk Management, but I was able to participate in many of the workshop organized by the Middle East group, mm -hmm. and uh, at that time I had activities. I have some work to do with that part of the world, so it really gave me an insight of the key risks that they're talking about. Yeah. So it's that kind of things that you, you know, you don't go and say, I need that tool, but you use them back yeah, immediately yeah. because it's really relevant. Exactly. Another one thing, I know we're straying off slightly, we've got one more section to finish, but risk communication for me since the start of my career, the communication element flows all the way through ERM and it's something that we're going to do another insight interview on risk communication itself so we'll, we'll build on that but yeah being able to communicate directly understanding your stakeholders understanding the different perspectives the different ways of communicating the plans all that's a whole topic in itself but uh, and, and adds value to any organization when they do that well but maybe then just to finish on our last section that you wanted to cover was sort of risk scenario testing exercising how that adds value uh, it creates value, adds value to the organizations. Um, I, I really, I, I thought of a, a scenario that I really want to talk about because when I did it, when I uh, uh, was leading uh, Toastmaster uh, this week 46 during the lockdown, we faced many risks, you know, many challenges, many people among our member died, member died, leaders died. So we really faced a significant challenge. Some club closed down, some clubs open up. So there was a, a, it was not really um, done in a structured way, it, managing risk as we are talking about. But I went back to reshape uh, and I used one of the uh, tools that I, I love, that I discovered when I joined the Institute of uh, Risk Management, which is the bow tie method. So I'm going to go through the bow tie method in reviewing what we went through uh, in 2020, 2021, uh, in this week 46. And, I, and then we can have a conversation to see if the bow tie aspect, the tool that I'm trying to explain works. So okay. remember that it was a pandemic, uh, yep. many things closed down. So Toastmaster has already done, because it's a training, communication and leadership training program. So they have already uh, developed online tools. So our education material was already online, but not fully uh, utilized. We still like to go in a meetings in different offices and uh, you know, hotel meeting to have your speech, to have your competition. So all those things suddenly stopped. So we were in a lockdown and we stopped the face-to-face -face meeting because there was a big threat, which was safety. So we cannot meet, it was finished. So we have to adjust and move to the online uh, clubs meeting and training. So when you look at the bow tie, in the middle, one of the things was to the health risk. The threat was the health risk, stopping the lockdown, uh, have stopping the meet, uh, meet uh, face to face meeting, and then um, the stress that we have because we didn't see each other, we didn't know how people were, and then you remember that we have a lot of psychological distress and uh, fatigue. So it was like those elements that I will put in the middle. And then uh, also in the middle, you have the necessity to shift from online to in uh, from in person to online meeting and reevaluate your priorities. And then, of course, remembering that the well being was the key. So the threat we faced at that time to continue to run online was the technical difficulties. So not all of us were used to Zooms, Zoom teams, or all those online meetings. So you need to um, connect. And uh, um, there is also the need to 
to start to be resilient, to see that maybe it's not that bad. So we need to adjust. So we, on the other side of the, the bow tie, so we, I don't know if it's your side, this is the right side. So you have the consequences, mm -hmm. the decrease in numbers, technical issues, difficulties of scheduling and uh, um, some of those technical side. And then uh, finding a best um, online platform, boost the uh, membership, uh, conduct, reduce the training session, and um, really making sure that the quality of the education, learning, and the leadership is not decreased. Uh, the, for the leadership, there was a risk of burnout because meeting online can really be, uh, can have a negative impact. So these are the kind of consequences that we will see uh, in that uh, side. So by putting the mechanism in place, uh, by uh, starting to work well with the uh, online, we increase the accessibility. So we increase, we had members who are not from District 46 New York, who were really happy to come. So we have a member from India, they they can they could come without taking a plane. So it was a member from Africa in a French speaking country that came to our French bilingual club. So we innovate, uh, as I say, we create a podcast. So people wanted to learn how to be on uh, presenter. So we have the choir. So we try to create a number of benefits in uh, Toastmasters in implementing, as I say, the seven C's to um, make sure that the leader understand and take their own time. If they cannot, we were able to manage the stress. So that's a kind of how I can explain the bow tie in these. Uh, yeah, good. So you, you took the, the principles that you were talking about for value creation. You used a risk uh, methodology, a risk tool, the risk bow tie. Um, I'm sure lots of the IRM members have been through the training or use it themselves. It's a, a very useful technique for those that aren't aware. I think you, you explained it very well. You know, effectively, you're putting the risk in the middle, a threat or an opportunity. The inputs, the outputs um, causes consequences, and you can do it for any any area. But what you've done there uh, in that circumstances that you were talking about had created focused on areas, focused on where controls are weak and allowed you to add value to the organisations to yourself that you're working with. So that, that brings it nicely to a conclusion. So thank you for taking us through your your background, your knowledge and experience, how you can elaborate on, on, on value creation. It's really interesting to hear different perspectives. So thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you for your time. And, uh, and that's us finished. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Grant. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.